So serving recreational list representatives of committees, and clubs, your board recreation, and planners, policymakers, and experts from the national, state, regional, and local agencies, organizations, and boards. Everyone is cordially invited to our next meeting of the task force, which will be Sunday, November 11th, in the Hall of Fame in the shape of the Silk. Okay, thank you for that. In the last, I went to the last the meeting this week. It was very good. Excited. Yeah. The, these these committees are doing great work. We as a board need to be a little bit careful that three of us don't go to any of them. But uh, I don't think appreciate. that's a problem. Probably not. But yeah, you know, yeah, just we recognizing do. it. Yeah, I would think you could go just sit sit away from each other. If you're doing you just can't business of the town. Right, but if you're in different parts of the gym or something. You're not doing different things, sure. Is there any other public comment? Hearing none, the next item is issues and concerns for both boards. Are there any issues or concerns from the village? Nope. Issues or concerns from the select board? I have one. Uh, no way. Political signs in the village on town property. Okay. Could you explain? Well, there's a bunch of political signs on Whiting Hill Cemetery property, which the town owns. So I don't think, you know, I went by today and there's both sides on that, but I don't think that uh, the town should have any political signs on it whatsoever. That's town property, that is. Yep. How's the rest of the board feel? Could we ask Tom to see if I think that's whoever put good, them up I could think remove that's a good them? Good idea. I think that's, yeah. Pretty regular. Yeah. I, I'll pull them and put folks on front porch farm. Just remind people. Yeah. Just, okay. And just put them somewhere where they can be found. I I want that same vein. Um, you know, I own the Rick House Apartments. And when I leave that driveway out, my tenants are complaining that there's signs in, I'm guessing, the village property for dispensaries and stuff that block people's view to the left. And I don't know whether the village has a policy on private business signs in their right of way or not. Between the, uh, between the sidewalk and the curb? Yeah. That'd be the state and it just curve. makes it hard to see left right. when you're coming <laughs> out of there. And I, yeah. Quite a few people there. Just ponder, you know. I'm not. I'm just, yeah, saying it's going no all on our village green and policy that there can't be any, right? And I mean, it's it's rare. walking it's, people's view into that policy it's a safety way. issue. So right, I can make them move this. Well, just and talk to them. talk to them. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. I mean, they spent a pile of money. Probably, you know, it's got one of those big flying things. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, political sign for the village. All right. Any other issues or concerns from the boards? I just I just want to throw it out there that um, with regard to the political signs and the sign that you're talking about, those are arguably in the state's right of way. So I I don't know if the state would have. Um, a policy or jurisdiction over uh, yeah. signs in the right way. I know that they have. When I used to campaign, they collected a lot of my signs. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, and, you know, that, and that's yeah. And because they would be in their state right away. And technically, they're not supposed to be anything in the state's right away in terms of signs. So, and they're in the middle of the roundabout more so. You explain that. Neither here, yeah. neither here nor there. Yeah, neither here nor there. Yeah, right. But there's yeah. been no order coming down for the state. Crews to pick up signs this year in the there right hasn't place. there has not been. Oh. I do not. Well, what do I know? Yeah. Anyways, it oh. is what it is. Okie dokie. Well, they used to. Yeah. Oh, they used to. <laughs> they used to have a hell of a collection of signs. Oh yeah. Not just political. There were piles of them up to Marshall. Sandwich boards, all kinds of stuff. Our next item. 
as the FEMA long-term recovery plan. I do believe there's a couple of gentlemen here from the FEMA to explain and maybe do a short presentation. Yep. Um, and Randall Zott is available on Zoom as well. Diana, that meeting is at what time? Yeah. Six? If you want to check for it, I'll get you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It'll get to every dollar. Thank you. You missed me. Okay. We had NPR in our housing our season after we don't have time to go. I went to a little bit Thank you for the handout. Would you be okay sitting in the seat just so the microphone can pick you up? Introduce yourself and uh, we can go over the handout. Okay. Thanks. So uh, my name is Mark Lease, and I'm with Community Assistance part of their governmental recovery coordination, IRC, part of FEMA. And uh, I don't know anything about the flood maps. Melissa and I talked about You got that one out of the way real quick. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, not um, I'm not a flood map guy, and uh, I'm not with IA or PA or any of the rest of those things. So we're part of community assistance. And what we, we have a, it's a very small group within FEMA. And it's, so we're spread thin, and uh, we've got assembled a little team here. And our, we're at the uh, Joint Field Office, the JFO in Williston, and uh, there's maybe six of us. And um, Peter Park back there is part of the team. Peter's new to the team and, and new to this kind of work, um, but he has 33 or something like that years experience in um, Minnesota as the uh, head of operations for the park system in, in, uh, in the state. Um, so he's he's got some great credits, really good. Um, he'll come in really very handy with one of the committees, the particular the recreation um, economic opportunity one. So anyway, well, the first thing I want to point out is that it's not FEMA's recovery plan; it's the town's recovery plan, and we're only here at your pleasure. If you request us to be here and provide assistance, and I'll explain what that looks like here in a second, but it's entirely up to you guys to request uh, that we come and show up and provide whatever assistance we can possibly provide. And so we, we do pass the skills, and uh, we've been, we're, in addition to me facilitation, because again, I have like you know, 50 years of that you know, under my belt. And um, but I'm an architect originally, a city planner most of my life, both public sector, private sector, downtown redevelopment planning, small town, uh, kind of small town specialty in Colorado, Denver. And so I'm uh, getting getting used to pronouncing Vermont instead of Vermont. <laughs> and uh, and as I pulled the group last night, was it last night or the night before? The night before. The night before. Um, I don't ski, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That means that got everybody uh, uh, had, we had a good time with that the other night. That might good. The um, so the a long long term recovery plan. I in my view, there's a couple of really strong reasons to do it and to support it. One is that it gets everybody on the same page, the whole town. We understand what the recovery projects need to be, the resiliency projects need to be, and community development in general. So kind of has those three elements to it, or three categories of project. And one of the things that it does for you as a town is that when you apply for grants, you have you have this recovery plan. It documents everything about all the projects that you want to do. And if the town or in the village endorse it by um, adopting it as an amendment to your comprehensive plan or the town plan, 
Um, then it tells those funders, whether it's a federal agency or philanthropy, that the town's government supports it and they back it. And that's really important. Um, and anything you can do, it's like a massive letter of support when you do a grant application. And so it's really important to do that because grants are really competitive. Most of them are extremely competitive. And anything you can do to help uh, give yourself a leg up on that process is, is a good thing to do. So so there's just lay, lay that out here. Um, the next thing I want to do is describe the process a little bit. And the uh, and the elements that are long term recovery plan. So the so the bottom image on the first page there um, talks about why and then sort of typical content of the long term recovery plan. You describe the impacts and, and the history and all the damage that was done because that's a pretext for the rest of the plan. It's really important to lay that out and describe it in detail, and then get into the uh, your describe the process that you went through. And you're all I think you're all familiar with the reimagine. Council process that's happened so far. And we're what I am proposing, um, if you know, if we get to be involved in all this, is that we assist you to take it from that point forward. In other words, I think what they did is terrific, it's foundational, and all we would do is build on that and, and move forward. And so um and then, and then in the process, um, after describing the process, it's important to have a vision statement and have everybody sort of read what that ought to be. And then get into project descriptions and detailed descriptions of the projects. And we have, I have a, a form that I like to use, which is a, can be a massive thing when you fill it out, but it, it, uh, when you fill out the form, you put in everything you know about getting a project done. You have the components of the project, costs, the timeline, a description of it, the benefits, the obstacles or challenges. Everything is laid out in there. And the partners that you would bring in and, have, and help you with it um, and how that might all look. So it's it's really, uh, it's a wonderful little document that helps everybody kind of get, build a file cabinet or, and, or a database of all the information that you can gather on a project so that when you, prepare a grant application, you already have it right there. And so you're you're off and on it. So it's, it's kind of a neat little deal. Um, and then lastly, an implementation matrix, which basically identifies the project, the, the funders, the costs, uh, the timelines, forget the time, but it's short term, it's term, that kind of thing. And then on the, uh, let's go to the next page, the little diary, the uh, flow chart there, that's on, um, so if you go to the middle bar here, right in the middle there, um, committees are kind of at the point where there are identification of projects. And, and at the bottom here, the text is what, what uh, FEMA can provide, technical support in the form of design studies, feasibility studies, cost estimates, even cost benefit analysis, all those kinds of things that generally are, are uh, you would need when you do a kind of application. And then, uh, the implementation matrix that I talked about, and then then recovery plan, hopefully adopted by a local jurisdiction, and then then you formulate project action plans going forward. And we call it a we started calling this a playbook because um, we can do all the discussion, we can kind of lay out here's all the steps that you're going to go through to get this thing done. Um, I'm as being a, an architect, and I'm old school. I draw everything by hand. And um, I enjoy doing it, and so it's a great, thing, a great opportunity for me to do something like get a kid out. Um, and these are totally just examples of drawings from my last deployment, which was in Alabama, in the fine tuning of self. And um, the next page there, I think we can skip over um, that stuff. I've already talked about it. <laughs> um, and then um, what? What I would like to be able to do if, if you guys go forward with this is, like I said, build on what um, BCRD has done and work with Laura. And um, she would take one of the committees. I, Peter and I will cover the other four and we will communicate with each other. So, all the communities, all the committees rather, 
get to know what the others are up to, what they're thinking about, because there's going to be overlap. And one committee's decisions and recommendations are going to inform the all the other committees. Um, so it's, and, I, and let me just tell you, so Peter and I, in the past week, we've attended all five of the <coughs> meetings. And they, uh, I think the average attendance is about a dozen at each one. And they are dedicated and energetic and they are very enthusiastic about it. Going forward with this, say, but the one big question they have is what kind of standards do we have? And they're eager to find out your decision. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Tell them that. Do you have any questions for us? No. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for Thanks. focusing on Johnson. Did I cover everything? I think you did, and okay. there will be more. <laughs> All right. I'm thinking of new projects for you. Yeah. Is there room for uh, like using VCRD as a base point and, and a guidebook? Is there room for slight expansion, I guess, of a long term flood recovery plan? Uh, yeah, and I'm talking about I'm just that. thinking of it just so you can understand my question. You know, relocating a wastewater treatment plant isn't overly appealing or a fun project. Um, or, you know, culvert inventory or recommendations for, for road reconstruction type of stuff like that. Yeah. Um, is there any chance to kind of take BCRD, respect everything there and build that, but also expand out to a little bit wider horizon? That's that's what I would go with it. And okay. I told, I talked to Laura about that. Mm -hmm. We had a long talk today. Um, because the recovery, long-term recovery plan, in my view, needs to be fairly holistic. And so you need to have you need to include all those projects in your public works people think they need to do. So that should be included. That should be a chapter in this thing. Yeah. Now, I don't know if we need another committee for that or whether we just, you know, in, the city staff provides or town the village staff provides that intro and we assemble it and then we fold it into this bigger online. Yeah. You know, um, the uh, that last little page here was kind of me thinking forward a little bit of how to. Take the committee structure that we have right now, it's the five committees, and pulling that into a more original table of contents for a recovery plan. Mm -hmm. So the chapter headings might be like I indicated here community planning, housing, health and social services, economic development, national and cultural resources, and infrastructure. And under infrastructure, we add all those things that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. the, um, Obviously, under health and social services, that's where food access committee goes in, plugs in, and all the recommendations that they'll come up with. And um, the and one of the other things that I noticed, and I also, Diana might uh, correct me if, you, if I mischaracterize it, but it seemed like the meeting the other night with the Recreation um, Economic Opportunity Group, we were sort of pushing on two things. One would be how to monetize the recreation that's available here. And then secondly, as we talked about that, people attended, were already starting to talk about physical improvements that they thought needed to be made in order to make that better. Mm -hmm. Like the, uh, adding connections in the trail network, for one thing, or floodlights of the ball field, those kinds of things. So it was both a kind of an economic, economic development goal but also then falling out of infrastructure that. Improvement infrastructure improvement. Yeah, then, then it could be added to this infrastructure list down the line. Yeah. So it's just, and that's just an early thought. Yeah. I was just noting on that the last 24 hours. So, yeah. yeah. So as far as where you were with the identifying projects are, the technical support, design studies, feasibility studies, cost estimates, cost benefits, analysis, all that's happening right now. So the last stability for a sort of treatment plan already. That's yeah. not. Yeah, it's not going to reach again. You know what I mean? Right. We're into that knee deep already, and this yeah. this is with state and people already. Right. Right. I mean, that's just to clarify on that part of it. Oh, we yeah. have no intention to start the project over. I don't look at you. Okay. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do anything that I don't need to do. Right. Yeah. So, so that would be easy to include in what's once once we're finished on our end to be able to throw that into this process. Yeah. 
but it's going to be moving forward at that process at yeah. that time. Anyway. Yeah, I just want your your stuff yeah. and we'll just plug it in. Yeah, I just didn't want to confuse that we would start that process again if we agreed to it. Right. Yeah. And just so I guess maybe take care of it quick. Time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe taking a massive step backwards, but to explain forwards, I think Beam is interested in the village requesting a long-term recovery plan and the town that way it's done jointly they would come back with a plan that we would either adopt or not and i do believe that this is at no physical cost to the taxpayers that's correct of the town or village yeah, and i right. we talked with our planning commission at our last meeting a little bit um and i think they'd like to be in, involved with the process i'm I don't want to volunteer them for what level because the, the chair's sitting back there and he's dirty eye in there. Yeah, a little bit, you know. <laughs> he doesn't have enough to do. <laughs> yeah. So from from a process standpoint, would you just need a motion or would you, do you have a... Can I ask a question and you know, make an observation before we go to the... Certainly. Are we going to do it or not? So you, you in, in your description Ken pointed out the the next steps to identify projects the, the last item you've got in there is the cost benefit analysis and my general understanding of most of the you know, grant sources at least is the cost benefit analysis has to meet certain thresholds in order to be yeah. approved it, it depends on the grant um, Sometimes you don't need to do that, but sometimes you do. And, and what I've seen in the past is is uh, we can gather the data and help you assemble some of the information that goes into the cost of analysis. Yeah, well, that would seem to be a pretty important function that you're talking about in this. The other, the other, the observation would be um, you've got flood modeling, the river project just. Just so you're aware and the committees are aware, there are, Lamont County Planning Commission just received a large grant to do um, really detailed flood um, modeling in Johnson area. So everybody just needs to be, I don't want to recreate the wheel. You, that, that ball is already happening. And I would assume that you could piggyback on that pretty easily. Um, Duncan, it's... Peter and I met with Melissa Manta. Manta, yeah. 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 On Monday, right? Monday afternoon. Great. Great. Okay. And so she brought us up to date on all their stuff. Yep. And she's a quick study, let me tell you. Um, pretty amazing. So, yeah. Um, and one of the things that the committees, uh, downtown reconfiguration committee, is well aware of is that they really can't move forward until they have a flood map that they can have some confidence in. Yeah. And so uh, Melissa or her, somebody else on that staff is gonna have to come over and give us all a tutorial on that and show us on a map, you know, where the lines are and what it means, uh, because we really can't move forward without that information. Yep. Um, and that's true for the housing, for the downtown piece, um, well, well, a recreation economy, too. I just want to point out that there are existing committees already that are working on some pieces of this. So like the rail trail committee, yeah. they are very interested in looking at options with Holmes Meadow to establish either camping or some, you know, some form of attraction to Johnson to get people on the rail trail. So they're, they're I guess, just co making sure that we coordinate with yeah. We don't work at cross purposes right. with, with any existing communities. And, and Doug, Doug was uh, at the meeting, and I guess I would ask the select board. Um, it seems like the recreation economy would be, a, would be a good meeting to have Isabel step in on, you know. But, um, and I was tasked with asking you if that you thought that was okay for Isabel to, to attend that because, you know, we got the college, we got the community. I'm fine with the concept. I think that's a, outside of this conversation. I don't want to eat the village up. Could we talk about it on Monday? Yeah, I'm not perfectly fine. Just trying to not go too far off. Even I just, I just remember um, Duncan's conversation triggered something. 
when we talked to Melissa, and I went to her with the idea of understanding what she's got and then asking her to come in front of the downtown reconfiguration group and, and presenting the information. And she said, she said, uh, until the town and village uh, endorse uh, this project as a whole, the recovery plan, she really can't do that. So, um, so that kind of that's a that's a key thing that we need to unlock. Right yeah. Certainly. The trustee board have any questions? Okay. So, are you looking for just a consensus, or like Kevin said, are you would you be looking for more? Uh, something? I think uh, if if it could be reflected in the minutes or something, so that I have something writing minimal, that would be fine. Yeah, that should be fine. Seems like right one now. motion because it's going to involve spending a federal dollars. So a formal motion would probably be smoother for their path. Yeah. Can I make a motion for the town? Sure. So move. Well, let's, well, <laughs> let's wait for the motion. We were going to make. We were going to. Add a little more detail to it than that. <laughs> so, my motion would be to seek FEMA's uh, recovery long term recovery plan assistance. Is that, is that does that cover it? Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Any further Thank discussion? You. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All of those opposed? And the ayes have it. Board like to make motion? Motion to use uh, FEMA's long term recovery plan. I'll second, second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> you and Peter, thank you for coming to all these meetings. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks. I've enjoyed every bit of it all the time. Great stuff. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. So just to add to that real quick here for you, Mark. Oh yeah. If you could maybe touch base with Eric, he can cite you in with what we've already come up with on our end. Okay. Probably the best thing is I'll share our uh, engineers did a piece that looks safe with FEMA um, all the options with the plan that might be something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I need to be informed about all that stuff. Yeah, I'll be in touch. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And one of the things that's so cool is we've had this constant thing about things getting lost and working against each other. Here we have a free resource that's gathering the ideas of those five committees, the town's needs, the village needs. Plan for education and stories and have one problem that we didn't solve yet, and they're doing it for free. Yeah. Maybe we can use the other grant. Maybe we can use the RAR. Plan for children. This is an amazing amount of paperwork. Perfect. Health and journey. Wonderful. So, um, just because we have some new board members in the room. Typically, this conversation is to set the health insurance and uh, COLA. That is another item for the town treasurer clerk and her employee, because for the town, she is still an elected official for the village. Mm -hmm. um, historically, since I've been on the board, not since, you know, 1800. <laughs> uh, we could ask that. Historically, the town has honored what the both boards set for the clerk treasurer and assistant clerk treasurer and the village has honored that for their employees. That way there's no hostility. That's just the background for anybody who doesn't have it. So really jointly we're setting clerk treasurer, um, but we could make motions to just honor it across the board for all individual employees when we get there. Do we want to do that now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's listed as health insurance and then COLA, but um, it is kind of all one conversation. Well, I know the health insurance conversation is probably going to take longer. Oh, boy. Is the board okay with moving item number seven up to five? <laughs> sure. Does it bother me? Does it bother anybody on the village side? Okay. 
Deal. You got Sorry. it. You said it, was, call first. you said it was going to be quick. Yes, call it first. You said it was going to be quick. You promised. Yeah. Last year, both boards agreed on 2.5. Am I correct? Uh, last year, we agreed to budget on a 2.5% increase for the first six months of the year. Um, and that was based for new board members off from using the 12 month rolling average for the consumer price index of the Northeastern region for the month of November, which is the last page and it shows 2.5. We budgeted for 2.5 based on that. How would the board like to handle the cost of living adjustment? Or is there questions for their conversation? Well, we've got a six month. The village operates on a calendar year. We operate on a fiscal year. So the town budgeted 2.5% for, for our six year. months. And I believe you guys just assume your budget for six months, but you have that in. I don't know how that whole works. You go off the calendar. You go off the calendar. So your new budget already has the increase of. No, it's the one starting January 1st. Okay. And then you approve that budget in April. Okay. Well, we get to run off an imaginary budget. <laughs> um, so the town budgeted 2.5%. The village agreed to 2.5% last year. So they'll agree to whatever we budget. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. That was quick. I do that for you. you. Beat me to it. <laughs> I was going for 11 or 12. So when we look, yeah, at it, we generally look, look at that November figure, right? Yeah, well, how how the boards agreed to do it last year um, was to look at the November figure for the previous year. Because the November figure is not going to be out till December of this year right. before our budget goes out. And the thought process was that employees may be a day late, but they wouldn't be a dollar short because you'd lag on the rise for their COLA, but you'd also lag on the fall. So they would be getting a higher COLA on the way down. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any particular reason why we pick November and not, could we get September's number right now? Um, we picked November uh, selfishly. I think I threw that out there. Our highway union contract is based on that exact figure. And we agree. Um, yeah, it's the previous year, it's okay. It's, yeah. By the time we have to set the budget for set the town of four in November's for the budget for as well, will be it's okay. It's yeah, I, I, I agree with all that. I was just wondering where it was trending. Yeah, the the November yeah. number was just to keep to try to keep all employees. You answered that question last year, November would be lower than September. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm going to get. We have the index on the last page. Oh, it's going to be this year also. Okay, oh, how would the select board like to handle this? Do you have a question, Peter? So this will be for the remainder of this fiscal year. Um, it's, budgeting was the hard part because um, way back in the day, I believe I could be corrected in my spot right now that the select board did wage increases at the beginning of the fiscal year, but the health insurance increases came out at the beginning of the calendar year. So they shifted the increases to the calendar year, which created an issue with being able to budget for it. And this was a resolution to be able to budget for it so you don't have budget shortfalls and what the board might you have a young memory <laughs> people tell me i'm an old soul all the time you're an old codger but you got a young memory still <laughs> fat i would entertain some ideas from anybody here i'm i find like you're doing a 2.5 from last year and do what we've been doing for the past Three to four years. Just that seems to be working. It seems to be giving us a number to work with, and we know ahead of time, so it's not a guessing game. Uh, I have no problem with keeping it the same. 
I just, my only concern is that are we picking 2.5 out of the air? Is I just don't want to have it be out of respect. I do want to answer that, but Ken was asking well, so I was just going to let him go down. Okay. And yeah. Sorry. We'll go back. I, I'll I'll go along with your conversation. It was okay. predetermined last year. 2.5 percent was predetermined at this meeting last year. Yeah. It wasn't out at this meeting last year. What the two boards did was they agreed to use. 12 month rolling average for the month of November of the previous year in their budget process. Because we don't have this year's, obviously, but by the time our budget goes out. So we'll, if we agree to it, we'll have a predetermined number to budget for. Which will happen to make some. So the, the, the action would be to use the November 12 month figure in our budgeting. And not put in not a specific number to the action for tonight would be to set a cola increase to take effect January 1 uh, for the treasurer and assistant treasurer. You could make it for all of the town employees that are non union that you wanted. And then if we got con consensus from the boards to use the same number for next year, I don't think we need an action to do that because we can't actually bind next year's board to. A cola. But well, you understand Duncan's question, which was, do we say 2.5 or do we say um what the what the November I thought cola was? I thought your question was about budgeting for next year. Maybe I misunderstood. But it, it, it was. And I think if we're if we're gonna use next year the figure that we generate in the end of this year, is that so my question is more process are we following the same process which i think is what you were saying bj was we use the same process we did last year or this year last couple of years yeah yeah so this november the cola this november would be just an idea that's what we'll use next year if it drops down to 1.5 we'll end up using that november cola next year so even though that the crew is a little behind with the cost of living but at least they're always kind of getting that cost of living just kind of like a year behind. But that way it helps with our budgeting and everything. We already we will know a number, so we don't have to wait until the last minute to do it. Right. So we can't that's you could make a motion to use that, but I think consensus gets us our what we need for budgeting. If we're all in agreement on that process. I don't know. I got one more. Well. My uh, I see the twelve month average is three point one five six hundred and for what for the twelve month average? That's a twelve month rolling average right. for this year, which is missing three months. Right. So it's nine. I months. I mean, I guess I I lean more on the three than I do the two point five. But I said it's all a year in arrears. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I mean, it's not the three point one but five, but I think a three. Reaper, I mean, when we at work, I mean, we, we typically it's a 3% uh, cost of living. I mean, nothing's getting cheaper by any means. Taxes and everything else. Uh, I don't think 3% is, 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 is uh, no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't just, I don't just, yes, I, uh, I, uh, so, that's where I stand. I think that three is three is good for me. I think that's fair. Um, I think the work performed is worth it, and I think the cost of living kind of determines me. I'm Brian, I just clarify. Yeah. You know, I don't disagree with you at all. Yeah. Um, but this process was basically brought, like as Evan said, the ride the highs and lows. So, like last year, you know, we had a, a big inflation hit. So that they they got over six percent. Yeah, using this formula. Right. right. Using this formula last year, they had a two point five percent increase in cost of living, and they got a six point four percent increase in pay. Right. And so this formula of next year said it was one percent. So then we're going to tell the employees that right. even though everything costs more, right. you're only getting 1%.
that, yeah, I'm just, I'm just yeah, placing this down just to one person. I'm just happy. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the idea of maybe having following the CPI by having a minimum, you know, there's I've seen that before too. Well, I, I think there should be a minimum. I mean, I think that, I mean, unless we're going to minimize the price of, we're going to lock prices on everything, then of what stuff costs. I mean, it's. That's just my thought of it. I, I like this can. process there because I mean the price of gas may go up to a dollar ninety nine next month. You know, I mean Yeah, it just might. It, or it could be four seventy five. Or it would be four you know, I mean right. this this kind yeah. of gives us a trajectory that we can so when I stick, when work you're stick, you're stick with the they, they, don't, they run into high school. Yeah. So say if so this number comes in six the following year. Yeah. So, 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 in the budget and why we need to cut so, 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 we budgeted 2.5 percent increases but if we don't set a rate of pay increase I was thinking this all thing um, I'm just trying to catch so I'm doing I just throw this out there when I started this I was told by a person Set your budget and you stay with it about because it's not just your money, it's everybody already got exactly. Yep, so they've, they've budgeted for 2.5. So, if just per se, we did go to three, that's putting them out of their budget. We don't budget until January, so we were right on the fixed budget until April. Yeah, all right, I guess I'll we'll call it fake. It's what we agreed upon, hoping <laughs> taxpayers <laughs> through it. Yeah. So we would have to put it in there and we're in the role. So we're at a better advantage than they are. They have to plan half the year with us ahead of time. So that's why I want to say, Beth, you could correct me, four years now, this is the way it was. I think as soon as you were yeah, here, this is how we started doing it. And I think it's actually benefited yeah. the employees. I am an employer. I like to give people more money too. Yeah. However, we have to be fiscally responsible for those just. Yeah. We're throwing that out right. not trying to change your so if we budget in January, <laughs> no, just say if, if we, we can budget, budget it easier if than we they did, can say we threw a budget budget of three percent three percent. What is that that changes nothing? We no. just have we just budget that not for us, correct. But so as I said, we don't have to honor any board's past doings, <laughs> but what it's Right. It's kind of the way it is, is that the boards kind of agree upon it and hopes that the next boards follow through to keep the process roll and where it carries over. And one little thing, Lake, you're looking, Daryl, you know how you're shooting at 3.4, 3.4? Yeah. Well, if this says 3.4, so next year at this time, their increase will probably be 3.4. So we're keeping with that. It's just we're going by the previous year, if that makes sense. So this next year, they'll get more than 3, 3%. They'll get the 3.4 if we agree to do the process we've been doing for the past three to four years. Uh, it's just a way for all of us to know what we're looking at budget-wise and to keep them up on their cost of living. Yeah, they're a year behind, which kind of sucks, but they're still getting that cost of living increase. Don, can you have a question? I was questioning, but I think I, I, think I figured it out. We budgeted 2.5%. You're suggesting, and if I remember it correctly, Rosemary, you can help me with this. All employees, both town and village, get the pay increase January one, regardless. So we are we just sort of backwards codifying that? Well, last that last year's board budgeted for a two point five percent increase to all employees from January one. This year's board needs to actually set that. This year's board does not have to do what last year's board budgeted. All right. So it, it is backwards codifying unless three board members come in and have uh, massive objections to it. But so that's really for the town, well, not, the, not the village. The town the and the village, because they used to be separate, the town and the village set the clerk and treasurer's rate of increase. And historically, since I've been on the board, it's been honored for all employees. So we budgeted it for everybody, a 2.5% increase. Does we that, am I making sense? You want to pull, pull the board, Danny? I if think 2.5 is good. If it easier, I would move to 
project our budget is amount of 2.5 percent increase on the town side taking effect january 1 yeah for all town employees that are non-union as well as elected officials that are that's exactly my motion <laughs> <laughs> did you get that motion Donna? Yeah. <laughs> are we elected officials if no, but know. but Rosemary is an no, elected. We, we don't get all. Rosemary is an elected official. She is not. She, yes, I, we I, get a dollar an hour. And happy we got. All right. So there's a motion on the select board side. Is there a second? A second. Motion a second. Further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any more discussion over here? No. The motion. Same motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion on Daryl, you understand now? Yeah. I know I'm not asking if you're yeah. agreeing. Right. I hear you. All in favor? All right. All right. No. So do I feel roll call? Yeah. One no. Yeah. So BJ. Aye. Right. Steve. Aye. Right. Will. Aye. Right. Daryl. No. Chairs and I. Gotcha. Casey, you had a question? It's a civilian question. Oh, I'm sorry, Casey. I didn't see you. Sorry. As a civilian, I'm not clear on um, are these numbers like final for budget and where the process is uh, discussed. I mean, are, are any of these figures numbers you talked about any surprises between the players? They were announced last year. Yeah, they were announced last year to say we we haven't had the budget process conversation. All we did was set. The rate of increase taking effect January one. Well, that's me. For all non-union employees and elected officials. Now I would like I would like it noted that I when I said no, I'm not voting for a lesser number. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to make that clear so I don't get all kind of, I'm not voting for a lesser than two. Daryl wants his taxes to go off. We got you. Yeah, yeah they go off. <laughs> all right. Do we want to talk about the budget process? And can we, I think we can do this by consensus. Does the select board and the trustees want to do the same process for next year so we can budget? Yes. You're not nodding enough. I'm not you enough. speak loud, you should nod loudly. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a huge. Would you like to set goal uh, again? Same way. With consensus? Whatever. The rolling, what is it, the rolling call we use or it's the November? 12 month oh. average for the month of November of the previous year. Yes, and now they, be, we don't know yet. It'll be determined in December. Yeah, yeah they'll they'll spin it out and Eric or Tom or somebody yeah. will check in and we'll we'll get it out. Yeah, if you just email it to both. So I, I got the consensus on my side. I do too. I think we're good. That was that was your quick conversation? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, well, like, it gets better. <laughs> Okay. Health insurance. Oh well, we hit this one first, Eric. Yes. Uh, yes. All right. Please. Second sheet and pack. Pack sheet and recommendations. Only three employees in the village town. Village and town employed in um, BCES full insurance. All others use different plans to have career program. And generally pay more out of pocket for that increased coverage. All those people and their families will be financially hit the hardest with a change in the municipal health insurance offering, even a switch to MVP goal of 90%. Often to the point of a three to four percent raise still being a notice, noticeable debt net decrease in their wages. For the village, remains status quo, the budgetary effect on the village taxes is one quarter of one penny, which is verified by Rosemary. And that's that's just for the general department. That's right. Yep. And then Rosemary has town tax numbers, but it seems they are similarly minuscule. They're staying status quo the same plan, which is also um completely codified in the highway contract. And they're uh yes, yeah, so I'm looking at their the only way that, that would be open is if there was a change in temperature legislation. Which I have to say. Yeah, that's their problem. So that's 0.25 per what? 
That it says 0. 0.25. One, one per, quarter of one penny of per, tax rate. Per what? Per what year. I know, but I mean, is it? Is per it thousand, per thousand. Yeah, it'd be per thousand. Per, per thousand. thousand. So it'd be 25 cents per 100,000, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Additionally, yeah. disability insurance has had no rate increase in the dental insurance rates. They're very modest increase. It was too small to even calculate any tax rate tax. My recommendation is that Johnson Health Insurance contribute to remain to the 9% of PCBS goal. How much did the premium go up? What percent? That was a scary sounding number. It was 21%. I have a question about that. I looked at those numbers and it, it looked like the comparison was being made to between 2023 and 2025. Because if you look at the sheet that we used to develop our budget last year, the number was a thousand. No, it's not. Keep going. Was a thousand something. It, it, when I when I did the math, it looked like it was actually a seven point eight eight percent increase. Right. Yeah. Um, that was. I, I didn't come up with the same numbers as them either, but that's what they advertised. I mean, if you if you look at the spreadsheet that we developed last year, and look at the number, the dollar amount for a single person plan, it was I don't have it right in front of me. I don't have that sheet, but it was a thousand, thousand twenty five or something. Sure. And it's got an eleven thirty eight. So it's I don't know what the disconnect is, but the numbers that were in the chart that you sent out, yeah, did match. I, I stole from somewhere else. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it doesn't so matter. What was your percent that you ended up coming up with for it? I mean, did you end up? Well, if you look at if you look at the actual, so this year, a single person under the Crest Blue Shield was 11, 38, 38. And last year in that sheet, I don't have it with me. Um, I think it was a thousand. A thousand something. Yeah, one double nine, I believe. Yeah, that sounds right. So if you do if you do that, it comes out to seven point eight seven point eight percent as an increase, not not twenty one percent. So I, I don't know how that. I don't know where the twenty one percent number came from, but it well, well the important doesn't seem right. It's gonna. I think it's above fifteen percent. I was just at a meeting on another board yesterday, and they were, we were looking at a fifteen to twenty percent increase. And it, uh, it, it, under Eric's idea, I don't think it matters because if you look at the impact, you you based your impacts on the twenty twenty five rates, right? Right. So I I think yeah that's the important yeah. discussion. Well, looking at it, the moving MVP for the stadium was really beneficial for the town. Um, but after speaking to employees, I think this last year has been extremely hard. And to make any changes to health insurance has caused significant anxiety from both all town employees wide. And I think if there's a time to just put employees first, this is one thing that if we could just take a break and keep the status quo, you're saying you're putting the employees first and you don't want you to live any Anxiety is going through a rocket attack. Uh, I don't think talking about health care is going to cause a that kind of anxiety. How would the select board like to handle this? Do we have um, an idea how much it will impact our tax rate? Um, I I don't about half a cent. Correct me if I'm wrong. For the office, uh, half a cent, and for the highway department, it's uh, about 0.6%, 0.6 of one. Can percent. I see, can I see that sheet? Because what we budgeted for an increase, and what the actuals are, we budgeted more than the actual increase. So I don't. For six months, yeah. For six months, so I don't, I don't actually see how it impact. Uh, I guess it wouldn't impact our taxes this year. It would impact next year's. What you're talking about? Thank you, Yeah, but bear with me. And, and the highway, the highway one, you'd have to. Well, until, yeah. and, um, there's a clause in there that says if uh, 
I mean, I appreciate you reading our highway contract, but, think, but there is a clause. There is a clause in there, yes, that says it in health insurance legislation. Does it, does it say legislation? I don't know where it is in the packet. The third yeah, four pages, four pages, two pages, yeah, four pages, four pages, two 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 Town employees plus elected officials, or something of that matter. You guys still thinking that we can go first? What'd you say? If you're still thinking we can go first, we go back. <laughs> How many people are on the family plan? One. One person. We're talking about thirty-four thousand five hundred forty-one dollars. It's quite a benefit. It is quite a benefit. Yeah. It's like fifty percent of people's salaries. Yeah. You haven't looked at their salaries. <laughs> I would it would be like I hey, I love my board like that. Just push me over here. Yeah. Um, I'm good with the 90%. I'm talking about people the same everybody, so everybody, everybody works on uh I motion to keep 90% Blue Cross Blue Shield uh um, for gold. the village. Gold or gold, whatever they're worth. Same as last year. For twenty twenty five. For twenty twenty five. Do we have a second? I'm second. Any further discussion? Yeah. So the um, so the so we're currently at the ninety percent on the gold plan. Mm -hmm. If we transfer the increase to the taxpayers, you're saying it's one quarter of one cent per thousand. Is the is the impact on the rate on taxpayers? Right. In reality, that's going to be between. You look at the big picture. Our fuel prices are all. You know, much lower. There's these savings there. Okay. 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 okay, so this vote is extended to the town agrees. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Passes on their side if you agree. How would the select board like to handle this? Are we ready to make a decision? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I'll, I'll support the village motion 90%. I'll uh, blue, blue Cross Blue Shield, Shield gold, gold standard gold. plan. Yes. Did you get that, Donna? Peter. I spent six years of my life trying to bring in health care. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I say you failed. Uh, I just want to say that I'm okay with the motion as it stands, but I think that we talked last year about the possibility of looking at a more comprehensive look at all insurance options. And I don't think we're seeing that. And I would like to. We have. We spent a lot of time. Well, I love that. Unfortunately, the, uh, I, I really, really we looked at trying to go to a high deductible PPO with a funded card and a lot of stuff. The insurance companies have caught on to that and they raise all those rates to make it not work. It costs more. Yeah. <laughs> what a bunch of scoundrels. Yeah. They I mean that used to be the way to go. And if, if, if you do it right, it works out for everybody. But the insurance companies figured it out. Total out of pocket increased significantly and the premiums rose. So the difference it used to be just total out of pocket and the premiums for uh the, Cheapest plan and the platinum plan were just inverse, right? Now that's changed. And so now the total out of pocket plus the premiums for the lowest plan are actually higher than the total out of pocket and the premium of the platinum. So for us at this point, we need to look at other options. Yeah, but I reached out to VLCT for help because of the complex issue and they no longer offer assistance with health insurance, but they do offer a consultant for a fee. Um, I didn't even vote on the last one. I know. 
challenging issue, you know, say why that we should. I guess I guess what I'm saying is uh, you guys may have done the research. I would like to have seen the research. Yeah. Whatever it was. I'd like to have seen that. <clears throat> Before we're sitting here. Before we're sitting here trying to make a decision. Uh, Trust, I, trusting you. I, I also believe a hundred percent that we should that we value our employees and we should do what we can to make our employees whole. I have to personally balance that with the impact of and my responsibility of the general taxpayers. So, so that's what while I can support the, the notion, uh, I also need to buttress that by saying that we are responsible to our taxpayers as well. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. No. Peter, how do you vote? Oh, aye. Aye. Mike? Nay. Mark? Aye. Duncan? Aye. Yeah, I just have it. I voted nay because I agree with Duncan. We didn't have enough information in front of us. So I'll just add, I trust my manager, and he showed me the style like this. He's not mistaken. Then he's yeah, but are you, the back. are you talking about the Excel spreadsheets that was sent out with the comparisons? No. Is that? That's point taken. Yeah. Well, what you do with your board is your business. Yeah. And what we do with ours is ours. That's why I said I trust And so manager. you don't know the conversation <laughs> that ensued before this happened. Right. Like so, that. All right. That was quicker than I thought. Next item. The we municipal plan. No, 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 no. Holiday party. Everybody, let's get happy and do a holiday party. I thought it's last up. year we said thousand dollars until Rosemary comes back and said it wasn't enough. <laughs> is, that what, is that what you're proposing this year? Well, nobody remembered that. <laughs> I guess I didn't. She's shocked. <laughs> no, I believe it was what six hundred girls. I Second. mean, it's well within the procurement policy, I guess. Um, we don't need. Is the board to conceptually that. happy with paying three hundred bucks for a holiday party for employees? Yay. All yes. right, wonderful. Village. We don't have vote on it. Eric has already to spend them. We didn't really vote. I guess I was just. Yeah. Getting a consensus. Yeah. Paul. Here. You're in the hot. Did you just call me what? <laughs> what did he call me? I heard Eric. What needs to call you? Did you? I might have to leave. I'm just check heading. Uh, I guess we're talking about the joint municipal plan. Do you want to? Come up in case you have anything, or I don't have the verbiage in front of me. Do you have the verbiage for that? Oh, you do. Mm -hmm. uh, the, one, the, plan, the joint municipal plan language on page 92 and 93, which we don't have in front of us. So, could you read what the Select board would like it to read. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What do you want? Like? I know what it is. Yeah. I want to make one. And else and never them. Yeah. You need to see it. Well, I wanted to see the actual change. Thank you. But yeah, yeah. Hey. Peter's on top of it. Thank you, boss. Yeah. Is this? So this is the language that the. So What I just. Handed, um, sorry, a short copy was the volume increase burden that Eric and the trustees wanted to share with the select board of the ATV language. And it's my understanding 
that on the 23rd of October, the result was on the discussion of the site board meeting of this limited call and some site board notes may have additional suggestions to what we highlighted in the next year. Yes, so we talked about it that last week. Um, and there are a couple of edits that the select board would like. Um, so this is what the village had proposed, I guess, for plan changes, right? I'm going to have to read through this. The select board would like... Did we... I don't think... Did we remove the whole second sentence? Peter, we're going to need your notes now. Okay. So on page 92, it would go from the current to reading ATV trail networks. The Vermont ATV Sportsman's Association maintains an extensive network of ATV trails on private and public lands across the state. Bassett trails in Johnson are primarily based on access to unpaved sections of class three and four roads. These roads are maintained by the town of Johnson currently. There is no access to trails for ATVs, UTV riders to reach the village. An interest exists to find a solution that would provide connectivity between the current trail network and downtown amenities and services. All terrain vehicles, ATVs, are a part of Johnson's recreation economy. ATVs may be used in accordance with the Town of Johnson ATV ordinance. And there's a, I guess that last sentence is the same. Um, did We didn't have any edits for page 93? Yeah, I think so. Either. I kept you with Vail. You did. Okay. Um, so if the village is amendable to that wording. Have you seen it, or is this the first time I've seen it? Uh, this went to Ken, Lisa, and uh, Eric. On, we'll see at the end. Yeah, October okay. 22nd. So I'm sorry that you don't have a printed copy in front of you. But we can go through and make those amendments and you can mark up the copy you want you it, have if you'd like regularly right, removed one sentence where it was uh, 23 miles ago you came by the club which kind of was inaccurate yeah and i think um the word essential was removed in the last sentence so it now reads altering vehicles atvs are a part of johnson's recreation economy Comment board. Um, it'd been nice to have the updated version to look at, but uh, I'm sorry, Eric was gone. Yeah, Dan Moose. Dan Moose. Yeah. I loaded him. As I said, they they yeah. removed uh, yeah. this yeah. complete yeah. sentence out of the first one yeah. and uh, the word. Yeah, and nothing uh, too, no, nothing too uh, drastic. Yep. I think okay. it's a great addition to the point. Yep. So you guys are amendable to that language. Well, I haven't heard. Yeah, I guess that, that was a question. I mean, it's Tom. Yeah. Yep. I don't think essential is a, a correct or. It's out of there. They, they oh, it's not in this. Yeah, that was one of the. the that was the word they removed in yeah. the part so, about the trail network. I'm fine with that removing that. As far as the other one, I don't quite understand because I don't have the. I don't see why we need to remove the other one. So I got it marked where they were removing it. So in there, it's just we said the club take care of the road. Club uh, take care of the roads. I don't see why that. They do take care of club four roads, but we'll leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're the only ones that have. That's right. So, general consensus? Yeah. I didn't hear BJ. I yes, yeah, yes. We're, we're good with you, man. So, we're looking for a motion to approve today. Yeah. Okay, before that, so it's Paul and I, did great? All right. So, we have our final hearing warned. So you need to select dates for your final hearings because both the trustees and select board will need to hold the final hearing. That could just be your early December meeting if you Perfect. would like. Schedule sense. There's no time frame that unless you want to have, you know, 
Does it does the board have to be present for it? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. December meeting. Yeah. Um, our December meeting is the sixth. Or sorry, December, not November. December. 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 Can, Perfect. Can you add that to the first part of our first December meeting, Tom, and work with um, Megan to get it posted? Second. Is the board okay with that? Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Here, see. Here, see. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul Megan. Thank you, Megan. Next item is the website. Um, I believe you guys have some. It's not printed out. Uh, we have not selected a vendor. Um, when the whole process started, the conversation was kind of go out, get our fee. Figure out how much it costs to build, and the village will tell you if there's interest or not. Uh -huh. Yeah. In case anybody thought the town was loaded, we're, we're not really looking at the hundred and twenty thousand. Um, I believe. But if the village wants to, but the bill. That's what we want. Yeah. We don't even want to go half on that. <laughs> we aren't. Uh, sure. I believe we'll be selecting a vendor um, based on recommendations from a couple of people that we'd ask for them. And the last numbers that we talked about last week were it would cost around $5,700. Less than six. Yeah. Total uh, for our website. So I guess the question of the village is, would you monthly? Would you be interested in yeah, yeah, that? That's in determined. This is to build the website. Yeah, would the yeah, build? That would determine if we go hot or not. There were two options. Uh, worst case scenario, so there was a single subcommittee. Uh, one was town web, another one was data design. I put the worst case scenario in your packet. Just you know, if you need it, go out just for the plan and pay three hundred for the data design and the one time fee, and a twenty six hundred and twenty dollars. Annually, we got $200. Beth? Beth, we're using our word cross insurance plan and then we have a person for the store and you put it in. I thought they were still going to use the uh, WordPress that would transfer it over. Yeah. Um, that was one of the vendors. Yeah. So, Board at Shane Penn's and Charles Wong did an analysis of 11 responses and we came up with uh, those two kind of like native design, um, both doing several little bit design and communication controls. So, there, so that 3000 is to migrate to a new hosted site like, in addition to design. Um, anything under this for the mitigation. Um, the whole thing is seven hundred dollars a year. I don't know how that's done. Um, Charles and most of the research, including his vendors, um, I think you know, reach out to him and sell all the You think you think that's too cheap? We don't do a lot of WordPress hosting right now, and there are and the tools that we use in WordPress. I've done I've done maintenance on the website personally. I, know. I am not a web developer. I don't do this for a living. And the hosting is not expensive for us. And if the redesign can if, if the people we're talking to are going to use web uh, WordPress as their host, I don't understand why we would move the hosting anywhere else or and why they wouldn't just use the existing tools on our website and pages from within our post all right now, or they could do a tripled release of pages over time to make it look nice and new and fancy and all the things you'd expect the website to be. Um, I don't understand why we would move the hosting away unless there are concerns about security or other factors. And if that's the case, then that should be part of what's looked at in terms of our current 
but I think that hosting charge should be part of the look at in what the RFPs are because for our current charges, for our current charges are less than the new charges, then we should be negotiating with whoever the vendors are they're getting to stay hosted where we are and have them do the work in our system. I think this is over a lot of our head, which is why it was asked to have Shane and, and Charles look at it. And, and they did a lot of vetting. And I think your point is probably very valid, just about what it means. And maybe having Charles and, um, yeah, and Shane. Okay, well, I'm not a decision maker here. I am happy to talk to whomever, but it doesn't matter what I'm here or not with you all here. Um, what, so, what, what are you what, What's it going to cost a year? That's what. I it all comes down to because they're gonna cost uh, it would be a one -time, so the setup was fifty seven hundred, you said? Uh it'd be a one time fee of eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. It'd be like nine hundred for four. Yeah. And then every year following, right, including the first year annually, would be twenty two thousand six hundred and twenty or thirteen hundred and ten per municipality. The own site. And all the things, right? And then so take care of it, maintain it. Yeah. Um, that that's the worst case of the two options. The other option is um, has less features. This is a national company that has called Town Web, and they specialize in websites. Kind of put um, the, the town did the RFP, and so the board saw all responses. I put the response for Town Web right in front of you under the phone. Um, that was and I gave one to Eric as well tonight, and that, that was really. That's the one that Charles and Jamie wanted to go with number one, and if it worked all otherwise, then would back up as well. But okay, so it's an eighteen hundred one time fee, it's twenty six hundred and twenty dollars for both a year. What was the fifty seven hundred dollars? That's the redesign that was, of the website. That was a an, an estimate that was made, and, and then uh, so there's been some renegotiations talking about what services we actually need versus what we don't need, and now it's only twenty six twenty. So what's the number at the very bottom of 5220? Oh, uh, that's the middle column. That includes the payment portal that we don't need because we already have a payment portal. That's something that we already have. We sell a link to it. Um, for Mary, it's through a vendor that she uses. So it's a column on the left, and we don't uh, need that 311, A311, and $900 a year. So it's really the column on the left. And second from the bottom, the Website hosting, maintenance, and support. All of those are done. Good thoughts. Yeah. I have another question. In the proposal that came in, we wanted to allow staff to update on that. Yeah, we included <laughs> as a cost a, a manual so that um, routine maintenance, a manual and training uh, for routine maintenance and uploading of uh, documents and pictures. And so, constant. So the day-to-day -day stuff, um, we wanted our staff in the office, multiple people to have it be bombed for somebody to kind of come out and get over. Well, this also like take payments and things like that. And if so, does that cost any extra to have something like that? That's the credit card processor, which is oh, they have their own private portal, and they, they take an additional three percent to save a hundred dollar dog registration for like my dog. Costs you hundred and three dollars, and that three dollars goes to the vendor and counts a hundred. Okay. Yeah. So if I walk into the town clerks and use my debit card to pay for that same thing, am I getting charged that extra fee? Yes. Yeah. You use your credit card. You know. Debit. Yeah. Even a debit card? He said debit. No, it's they, not they, yeah. they charge, yeah. Oh, so I didn't they realize that was slimy. Thanks. That doesn't seem like an incentive for people to, no. they're going to want to pay cash. I think a lot of people write checks. That's why I write checks. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah we're, well, the dinosaur checks are going beyond oh, time, you know. Yeah. You're showing your age. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time. It's, it's you know, I, I give people cash and they don't know what to do with it. Yeah, and you don't know what to do with the check you give them. <laughs> right. I'll, I'll, I'll take a turn if you want for a teach me how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Hang on, guys. We're, you can't we're joking. Yeah. Because the e-chat is a way to help. So thank you.
I am, I, I'm pretty sure for us, we're going to spend months. People do not want to keep on chat anymore. They'd rather pay the cost that we need to be chat or the 2.95% of our. And then they get money. The easiest thing is just a much cash for everybody's got your pocket. I mean, Mike and Doug, well, probably 45 bucks. You got to take a bet. <laughs> hey, Tom, what's the bet? <laughs> oh, I got a question for you. So, this middle one is 52.20. Is that initial payment cover that whole first year, or is it this big lump sum? And on top of that, this. You that um, if you look at the 52.20, you actually like remove that bottom serve, the total annual investment. Um, the bottom third are services that they offer that we don't really want to be. Um, and it's like a text message alert. So you get down to people, but you send like a town wide text. And it's just an unnecessary service. At this point, we have um, emergency alerts that really are all information to come from and not from total. So we're really looking at 2620. 2620 is the annual. A year. Yeah. Put that. That middle column, the middle railway. So this this fifty nine, that's that's on top of for the first year. That's on top of the twenty six twenty for the very first year. Or does that fifty seven hundred kind of encompass the build out and your first year all at once? Yeah. So no, the first year is now eighteen hundred dollars. The fifty seven is the build out. Just put it. Just put that out. You yeah, put that away. Right on. That's not even talking about it. 1800. And that's a one time, right? Yeah. 1800. Website set up the 1800. Website hosting, maintenance, and support 2620 a year. So you guys already selected down to a vendor, is what you said? We have not. So we have not, not, but we will. Oh, we're just talking about it. So the numbers you're giving us is off the vendor of your favorite? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Don't give us a different that's number. And then that's don't don't on it. Yeah. yeah. That's the one in favor. That's the deal. That's a good deal. We to go to that. The that the plan that you your board recommended. The yeah. basic question was: Did you guys want to participate yeah. at that? Yeah. Well, it's that all, it's all on. Like I said, we we needed numbers. We hadn't seen numbers really until now. So if that's if, the plan that you guys were looking at and thinking of going. They're going to get a presentation on Monday, so you're like, the this meeting is just slightly ahead of the... Okay, meeting. so then you're not looking for an answer from us today, because I believe we're interested, if I'm, I'm not correct. We're selecting a vendor Monday, <laughs> I guess, regardless, or yeah, we're rejecting all that. 200 a year right now, our half is 200 a year. This will turn it into $110 a month. So we would be... I mean, no, we're going from a uh, uh, Kindle book reading off of an iPad to an actual website, which could benefit us several ways down the road. So, do you guys want to participate in this? Do we want to tell them now? I, I'm interested in further conversation. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Well, Steve? yeah, I'd like to further. All right, so we'll we'll discuss this at our meeting next Wednesday. And okay, we have your number. Eric, you want to make sure you get the just so you can re explain it. If you could get if you could get all their numbers, yeah. Yeah. if we pick an actual vendor, can you pass the information on to Eric? Yeah, that's what I wanted to yeah. Well, that's fine. And I answer on numbers, yeah. So are you guys are you guys going to move forward and sort of the whole thing if we say no? I can't answer for the board, but um. We're going to discuss it Monday, and if the board decides to, then yes. Um, I think the difficult part, Will, would be right now we we have a a, a mixed um, website mm -hmm. with village stuff and town stuff yep. on it. If we go it alone, it's going to be town only. Right. Oh no, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. the current the current website. You just would remove yourself from it, right? To be honest, because it's that's what you're talking about keeping part of it. All of our reserves. all of our data would come off of it, I would assume. Right. So that's my we, we, we could absorb the whole current website if you guys want I mean, yeah, that's right. the tricky part. Um, <laughs> at town of Johnson .com. Right, the domain. Yeah. Yeah. There's a domain name. Yeah. yeah we would have you guys would have to get a domain name. Manager. So that would really <laughs> we'll have our discussion about it. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Now for under property already 
probably wouldn't get there until like 10 o'clock. Yeah, we're not back to now. Our dear eagle. Uh, this is going to be quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told you it would be quick. Mind you, these conversations are just interest. We don't, I, I don't think we need to get into the nitty gritty. It's just, no. are both parties interested? If we are, we can select a couple of board members to look into it or have our manager's perspective work on it. Yep. And if we're not, we just know it's off the table. Okay, so the village brought to you guys about 180 acres. Mm -hmm. um, we'd like to see it back in the tax base. There's no sense in us just sitting on prime land when we're talking about reimagining Johnson and the village of Johnson and everything else. And there's no place for anybody to build in the town and the village is holding 180 acres. My understanding of that, Ken, is this, that the original proposal 100 years ago was that no, the town the town, no, cool. the town and village would take out the parcels they figured they needed to maintain the, the buildings for the highways and electric department and water and sewer, and then the rest of it would be turned back on the on the market and back on the tax rolls. The town put it up for a vote, and the town's people selected to not sell the property. Is that my, is that a correct assessment? The town okay. taxpayers didn't want to get rid of it at the time. At the time, okay. Um, I think, didn't the village vote on it too, or did they not vote because the village, had, because the town? I can't remember. They did or didn't? They Eric, did you know? know? Sideline. So, um, this has been a bone of contention for me since that meeting. So, um, I, I'm I'm very much in favor of of putting that back out, putting it back out there, and if and if the town doesn't agree, um, the voters don't agree to sell the property. I mean, I think it should be divided, and the and the village taxpayers allowed to uh, take the, take a portion of that property and have a choice of whether to sell or not. That's my opinion. Preliminary drawings of like. Where the line should be for the public storage building in the back of the, you know, those graphic storage. I have not. We have I not. think I think I mean, this is high level. Is yes. there is there a pallet from the village and the town to sell the 180 acres? Understanding your wishes, um, but I think we'd have to talk about it more in meetings. Oh yeah, yeah, Probably absolutely. Right. In, even if there is a pallet, it's still going to have to go to the voters. Yeah, I think you'll have to be village, warned. Both right? village and town right. voters are going right. to have to vote. If I remember correctly, the statute says that the the legislative body may sell a property, but they have to post notification of it. Yeah. And if there is a petition submitted, then the then it becomes a town vote. So I think, Eric, maybe you remember this better than I do, but I think given the language. The town just said, we're going to get, you know, we're going to get a petition, so we'll put it as an article on the morning. And, and the town would, would you agree that the climate today is different than it was back when that vote was taken? I have no idea, Will. I really don't. I mean, but it should be with reimagining the Johnson. I, have, going on. And, and, and yeah, I think that I think the financial right. climate is yeah. knowing that yeah. probably go back on the tax yeah. rolls yeah. is going to be a help, especially yeah. as we're losing, yeah. what, a dozen properties in the village and town? It makes as much sense the, the flood, as the flood. solar panels in the middle of I mean, so flat field about that could be in development on 100 and more so you know what i mean by us not doing anything with that land and we have people leaving and they could buy a new piece of land instead of leaving it's just a we can reimagine with the reimagining of both the town and the village right now not one of us can afford to even put walking trails up in that room. so you guys want to pull the boards and see what the boards yeah. But that was that was our reason. What are the board discussed it? So. What are the board's thoughts on the general concept? Well, it's going to be difficult to figure out what half is what half. But we wouldn't have to do that if both boards agreed that we want to try to sell it. But the whole, the whole thing, the whole thing. If we if we do that as, as a collective two boards and present it to the voters, we obviously get we can actually get denied. But I'm just saying, as, as a collective body here, we can go. Let's put this out before the voters again. To see what the climate is today as far as do we want to have more places to build houses do we want to put stuff back in the tax roll because we're going to take a big hit here with that flood loss i mean and we would have to subdivide anyways right and we'll, we'll do that process we can subdivide not only the portions that the town and village need but we can subdivide the village and town portions and is there any identified brownfield 
in portions of that. I don't know. I don't think it was part of the 188 class. I could yeah. be wrong, but well, anyway, well, the whole thing was because originally Gerald Petro sold 15 acres to the town and village for the so-called town and village complexes. Yeah. And then at a later date, actually sold or had a purchase and sale agreement with the village because the village was originally going to try and investigate the flat area for a water supply. Mm -hmm. And then the town, the village agreed to let the town become a part owner. And it it went, I think, to both voters for approval. Both, both boards yep. for approval. So that's how we acquired the 180. But the 100, it's important to remember, the 180 includes the lower building. Yeah. But yeah. that could be part of the subdivision where it stayed joint property or whatnot. Yeah, we, did, but, we did take the sand, the well, sand pit and the salt shed and stuff like that yeah. and include that as far as what we're going to keep. The house. Yeah. And yeah. Well, but I'm not sure. I mean, to Evan's point, I don't know the answer about whether there's brownfields yeah, on um, that involvement or not. Right. But, but it's something we would need to look at. But what we'd have to look at is even, you know, they even consider that it's if we're going to subdivide and not sell, as you know, say just we subdivide it in two, that that hinders people that would buy that parcel to subdivide again because they don't like to subdivide and subdivide in the same parcel and one goes back to 50. So it would be a smarter move if we were to say voters agree to subdivide to subdivide it into lots or sell it as one piece so that a developer could do that exact same thing. That's we, also down the road. We also got we gotta we gotta get consensus of the board to see if we're interested yeah. in moving forward with try attempting to put us back on a tax roll. Peter? I think we I think we have to be real careful, you know, to your point about housing. Um if we just put it out there on the open market, we could end up with individual owners or a developer that's putting up housing that the people we're worried about can't afford. Jack, what would you be stuff? But, yeah, yeah, I I think these are all great conversations. They're all about uh, this. Will Will keeps touching on it. Uh, I think we just need a high level consensus. Are the boards interested? If we are both interested, we could assign a couple of board members on each board, come up with a plan or maybe pros and cons list. If one board isn't, I mean, this, this we conversation have is covered in every thing the mill house, the village, the town ground. Probably. Yeah. yeah. So that's, but they're just listed outside. They're not going to be because it's really all one on that story because mm -hmm. it would it would be silly to, we did move forward to something like stuff not to do it all at once. You want to board? I'm, I'm I'm obviously in, in favor. I'm I, interested in. Uh, I, I don't want to have Paul. We already had this conversation. Yeah, but, but I mean, we we're we're yeah. this in this forum. We need to let but our. That's why we brought it to him. Yeah. But, yeah. How's so the, so is is your thought process that we would put potentially look at all, all of the properties or all of the buildings uh, on the two properties? Right, or? So they're two separate parcels, so any subdivision would be two subdivisions. But just I was saying that if you're going to dive into it. And we're going to have the conversations to own the different properties separately. It all ought to be done at one time. I agree with that. Okay. Are they yeah. separate parcels, Rosemary? Or were they the 180 and the, the 15 acres and the 180? Yeah. 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 yeah, but what is it? The mill house right. and the lower they storage they is on 180. Merge no, no, the mill house. Mill house is part of the original. Was it? Okay. Yeah, I thought it was part of the no. no, house. Mill house is 15 acres. Yeah, the 180 yeah. is like the smoke house, lower storage, yeah. salt shed. Yeah. Up Sam Brown Hill. Up, yeah. Everything south of Lundway Lane. Right. Okay, so we'd like to talk about it. So what do you guys want? How do you guys feel about this? I thought talking about it was a good idea until Will said he was in favor of it. <laughs> 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 well, we look like we know who two of them are going to be on the committee. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, to that point, I would, I would, I, I'm, I'm in favor of looking into it, but I, I also think it, we should consider at least the possibility of having a, a member of the public appointed by both boards, on that committee. Um, you know, <laughs> I already asked him. <laughs> it was really interesting. Um, but I, I think. You know, I think it would be 
I think it, it, in the long run, if we had a, a consensus involving a respected member of the community, that could lend some weight to the discussion at town meeting. Should we sell or not, or should we, yeah. you know, implement this plan? So it's just a thought. I'm, yeah. I, I, mean, I guess I, my bottom I mean, line I don't is see a downside you know, putting it back on a tax roll. I don't see a downside to that at all. I mean, we, we're using what we're going to use right now. I was going to say, does anybody see a future use of of any reason to keep it? It depends on who you right. talk to. Right. There's well, we're I'm talking right here. Right. I, isn't there a... And there was conversations of trail, oh my God, a trail plan. There was there, there was an apple oh, orchard. No. There was there was an apple orchard, so the kids didn't have to travel thirty Mount minutes to get that. There was a ski lift, so people that can't afford to go to Stowe or smugglers could <laughs> ski. Uh, I, I was uh, I was on that in those meetings, and I'm telling you, it was it was pie in the sky stuff. It was ski awesome. Ski lift. Oh yeah, that was one. I of mean, the things I ran on a town wide pool concept. <laughs> <laughs> We used to have two. Really you live by Fort Road. Hasn't caught any traction. Yeah. Yeah. We used to have two ski lifts in town. Oh, two ski lifts. Beard, yeah. 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 Beard and had one and yep. college had one. Yep, rope top. But neither neither here nor there. Ah, they used to have a bar. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> um, neither here nor there. I, I don't see any harm in discussing it. My one caveat is I do hope that we don't sell it like you're thinking without a town vote. Okay. I, no, I absolutely think we should. Get, I, I really feel, and I think you feel that way, Will. That mm -hmm. it should, the voters should weigh in. Well, the Dallas people wouldn't let us get away with it anyway. No, they wouldn't. I'm just, I just, you're going to have a vote. The there, whether you warn it or whether they make you warn it, you're, you're going to have a vote. Exactly. You're so, going to have a vote. Yeah. 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 Either, either way. Right. So, so it doesn't so, make any sense. So I think we can vote. agree that we intend to have a vote. But, it's, but the vote won't go forward if your board doesn't agree to move it forward. That's that's where and we're I'm at. I'm agreeing to moving it forward. Okay. With the caveat that you understand I really I will change my mind if we figure out let's sell it and not have a vote. <laughs> I don't say even even on the statute we would allow that. allow that. I can't imagine a scenario right. where we wouldn't be served by a petition oh, yeah. requiring a vote. Yeah. Mike, it's can't more to do that. Mike, what are your thoughts? Sorry, we're, we're only two members down here. Mike, what do you what, think? What, did you talk Ken, about, or somebody talk over there about uh, not selling it to the developer for unaffordable? That was your guy. Okay, you're the one that mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> you were really close. <laughs> I need to turn my hearing aid. In. <laughs> I can hear people over there better. Than um, I don't want to see a more so either. No, you know I don't want to see twenty five hundred dollars on one department. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's. More spill or spoil as far as I'm concerned. Right, but, you're interested in the concept. But I'm interested in the concept, but I'm not necessarily 100% behind selling the property. I'll listen to the if, ands, and buts about it. Uh, but ultimately, it will come to the townspeople for their decision. All right. Not mine. Does the town want to buy it at fair market value? Buy our half out. <laughs> What's it even worth? That's what I'm most excited about. This idea. You can have it. Whether well, you subdivide, it, then you can it 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 sell. Oh, no. You still separate the joint ownership, so that way, say it just becomes just town, then the town can host the rope toe without bringing the village along. You know, so the idea itself cleans up so much, just and it frees up the future, anyways. You know? Yeah, it's all it comes down to money. Yeah, Peter, no all, all joking aside, you were interested in more information in the concept, right? Yeah, okay. yes, yes. Well, there's a consensus it's perfect of interest. Can I just go for the Millhouse Village Garage and Town Garage? Sure, can we? I, interested? I, I, sure, I'm in favor. On the agenda. I, I'd like to subdivide that. Are, yeah. you, are you in favor of taking the, taking the Millhouse? <laughs> yeah, I can't commit to right now. All right, all right. I'm not saying commit. I'm not, we're not, we're not doing anything. I'm in favor right of now. discussing it. Yes. Yeah. I have a feeling the millhouse go away. You know, we had talked a, a while back about this when I was on the board previously. Yeah. And it was talked about the town owning the municipal office building and then charging the village rent. Now, I understand that's off the table now, correct? Yeah. You're not even interested in that concept anymore. No. Well, the point was, you know, if we're going to take, if you want us to take the mill house, that's an albatross. 
and you know it. You want to get rid of it, okay? I really you do. So if we, if you want us to take it, you're going to have to give us something in return. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only guy in this room that will take a free house and call it a deficit. <laughs> Paying for a building and keeping it heating and splitting the cost for something that neither the town or the village uses. Yeah, yeah. And we don't really want it. Right. But yeah. a lot of a we lot of small practice with it. A lot of people. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So <laughs> food shopping is really right. Funny. Just leave the land. No, I don't know. Right. 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 They're right. overflowing with money. I don't know where I heard this, but <laughs> there was talk about <laughs> somebody wanting to buy that building for a hostel. Mm -hmm. Or something for the. Were you yeah. talking about that? I heard it too. It's rail trail thoughts. It is a good, lo trail. good location for rail trail services, but I guess. we're getting fairly deep into the weeds yep. here. We, uh, Why don't we sell it then? If neither of us want it. Do we have to be subdivided? Do we want to pick two board members to to look into it, or just kind of go back and forth? Put the boards on emails of concept and pick members in our own meetings. I'd say that'd be the better route to start with because it doesn't sound like it's going to go far. Deal. <laughs> Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. You guys okay with that? Yeah. I hope it goes a little farther than this. I would hope it would too, but I don't see it now. I'll be Mike's age and saying, <laughs> back when I was a kid, we was, <laughs> we've been talking about this for 30 years. Okay. <laughs> We're working on repairs now, right? <laughs> oh, back on. Back, back on. Hang on. Exactly yeah. where the village boundary is. But I believe the uh, Water Lake Department's maintenance building. Is outside of the village boundary. Absolutely. So if you carve it up, just the village will have to pay taxes to the town. For that they're property. they're a nonprofit. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh. I know they're all theory of motive. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I just want to throw it out. The ulterior well, motive. We'll just annex that portion of the building. Education building. property tax. So. All right. right. But the enterprise funds can just raise their rent. Yeah, that could be covered. So it's Peter, so Peter like, and Mike, you're two committee members for this. We're going to select our own in our own meetings. <laughs> okay. All right. Next item is the backhoe. Is there interest from the village in the town owning the backhoe? One hundred percent and the eighty twenty split. There is right now. What, where, why, and how? What, where, come up? What, where, why, and how? Are you getting a new one? I mean, no, it, it is. This came up last year when we were talking yeah, about the And it just creates issues with the joint ownership. Now, uh, I don't know if the hours are even being logged. I mean, we're talking about $5,400 for tires on Monday, which is going to need to come to you guys for approval. Um, maintenance, trade, Renewal, everything is just easier than yeah. it being split. And I do believe when we talked last year, you guys had kind of said, well, an excavator works better anyways, the back goes slow. So if there's no interest and it doesn't fit your utilities needs, I'm just asking, you could just say no. I, the biggest use of it right now, the biggest importance of being there is, is when the water breaks in the middle of the night. But I think today's, maybe I know this is only contingent upon uh, how long it lasts. But Alan has, I believe, talked to Kenny about. We've had a discussion with nothing was finalized. Right, but but there, he was open to the possibility of us being able to have access to an after-hours excavator if we needed it. So now that as long as he owns the business, as long as he feels in that in that way, so it's not a. It's not a long-term, long-term solution, but there there are alternatives. The other alternative would be to rent it from you guys. If you take if you take full ownership, would there be some sort of a rental agreement that if we needed it at two a.m. can can we can we rent it from you? If you clean it up and do the same with the skid steer, do the same with your one-time dump, do the same. Well, that's all owned by them. But but that's my point. So sometimes we use your dump truck. Dump dump. Because we don't have our, our dump trailer doesn't fit in or whatever. Right. Sometimes we have to use the skid steer. And we have these great handshake agreements. Nate and Jason are working really well. Right. And I, 
think it's really about cleaning up maintenance, cleaning up ownership, cleaning up when it comes time to trade, what happens to that trade value, right? And like how right. do I move forward the next piece of equipment? Yeah. But I think that might be an MOU situation that form wise right. would be an option. I mean, I mean, obviously, having the access to it two o'clock in the morning is going to be this is going to be great. And that twenty percent, we do have that. If we can do an MOU to guarantee an access to that, and then we can apply our twenty percent value of the current thing towards that rental, that would be great. So, other question: Do I'm the, not opposed that, to the idea? Just to answer your initial question, I don't know how the board feels. I'm not opposed to having some sort of an agreement so that you can provide emergency services. I'm just speaking solely. Yep. Yep. Is that backhoe the one that we just ended up doing nine hundred dollars in a paint job to sell, or is that a different one? It's the only backhoe down. <laughs> so, okay. so it got painted to sell, but it hasn't sold yet. I don't you know if it got painted to sell. We put ten thousand dollars in electrical work in it two years ago. We put thirty six hundred dollars in pins and bushings in there it last year, the pins which I believe yeah. the town guys replaced solely. But we do use it for digging. We yeah. not. Yeah, we don't so, get our twenty percent. So I was talking to Nate about this, and I said, "What was your best option of it?" And he says, "As few times that he uses it, and that he would be better served with what he needs with an excavator." And then he was going on telling me about being able to rent one as we need it, and being that the town owns 80% of it, if he needed it and the town was using it, we'd have to, he has to line his work up around the town, which is understandable. Yep. So for me, I would think it'd be better served for us to rent one as we need it and not be a 20% owner of it anymore. Just talking from what I, what I gathered from the guys that use it. Yeah, I think Will was just saying right. yeah. an emergency need. When nothing, yeah, happened. and Nate was saying that an emergency need that he had an understanding with Alan that they could get one in the middle of the night. Just going by what I talked about, but moving forward, we still want to have something more guaranteed to be available because you guys are going to be using that too in the morning if we need it. Alan, well, we might get a flood, yeah, yeah. Well, floods, yeah, floods yeah. And yeah. We're, not, we're not digging holes in the floods, so <laughs> well, it could be a broken water line flooding the whole town. So, so if we were to do that, how are you going to determine the twenty percent value? I mean, so this this uh, it's not worth nothing, and before you put tires on it, you're going to get value. This is a high level conversation. If there's that's a good point. I mean, yeah. we're not going to put tires on it yet. And we squeeze them over for three months, and we'll get back to you. No, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to yeah. answer your question. You said how, you know, how are you going to determine it? I'm not an equipment salesperson, and I don't think anybody in this room sells equipment. Yeah. I think, I think it would be perfectly reasonable to have it appraised okay. and well, use that value and 20% is pretty easy to figure yeah. out right there. And I, and now, I understand I that it's depreciating, but that's going to be the same on trading or a cash, a check to you. I, and and, I, and I, I don't want to do a check, to be honest with you. I would rather put a credit towards the leasing of it when we need it. That way there, you guys, you guys aren't giving us money. It's just, it's the, the intent of the, of the 80-20 was to share it. So to to, to um, put it all on you, so you have one hundred percent control of it, but to take money from you, I, I don't. I'd better use that 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 twenty percent, whatever that value is, towards the intent of the original agreement, which was to be able to share it. So therefore, there's no cash. There's no cash exchange. We get to use it, and we pay for it when we use it, and it comes out of that twenty percent value. All right. Does that make sense? Yep. So what else? You work with their guy and that work for you. Can I just make come it, up with a price on what it's worth? Yeah. Let's just start with the price. Because that's where it would start, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yes, you can. I I agree with you in concept, but, but. I can tell you that in the <laughs> past, <laughs> what, what was supposed to be happening was there was supposed to be a log book in the right. backhoe. And anytime the village used it, they were supposed to write down their hours. And anytime the town used it, it didn't happen. Right. Well, that's that's a failure on our part. We did not, or in your parts, because it wasn't being done. If, if this agreement goes through with that intent of keeping the same philosophy of why we started started to begin with, we can tell the employees to do this. Yeah, I think that was and, done. And, <laughs> no, but I'm saying, as far as it goes, it, it would be it would be it would be on us. 
to to enforce it with our employees because you guys won't care how many hours you run it. We you just care about how many times we're using it. So we can we can make it. Yeah, it would be yeah. similar to a rental. Exactly. A rental. Exactly. Yeah. So we, you know, I think we can, I think Eric's capable of handling our employees to say this will be done. Yeah. If not, you're gonna pay for it. So <laughs> I, I guess that that's the only way it, that, that's the only way that the trustees want to do it. I guess we'll have to, I would have to look into it, but to tell you the truth, I would rather own it. I'd rather write you out a check, I'd rather find out exactly what it's worth and then pay you 20% of it, write you out a check and it's over with. And be done with it. Yes. I, I mean, I, I was just trying to avoid the flow of cash. No, and, and, th and then then you could straighten that out afterwards. Yeah. But I think it's much cleaner to write out a check in the town hall. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I was just trying to throw an offer out there that would keep a flavor of the of the original agreement without having to yeah. write each other checks. We could put it in like an equipment middle reserve fund. Right, but as far as that goes, yeah, we we can take the money yeah. and just do that. But, so yeah. high high level, there's excellent job. And so I think this can be done with managers. I mean, I don't think this needs a, a committee or anything. Like yeah, I mean, it, there's it's pretty clean cut. Pat and Deer are coming down soon, anyway, so they can yeah. just tell you. Perfect. Third yeah. party expert in the industry. Yeah. Okay. Buying and selling the book. Yeah. Well, you agree? Yeah. Managers can take it from here, right? It, huh? it, managers can take it from here. I mean, that's yeah, they have to report back. Brain surgery. They need, they need an estimate, and then we need to agree on our price. Yeah, <laughs> and I'd love to have that happen. I mean, we're working on our budgets, um, so it would be really timely to be able to. If if it's going to be a cash transaction, I'd like to build that. So it's like I said, you want you want to do this deal before you put tires on and ready. Yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's the same horse. Yeah. I'll make sure to wait until you put tires on before I let it. It's supposed to be coming out the last two months, but because you'd have to pay twenty percent of the tire. That's still going to get us more out when you put on a couple of grand worth of tire. Oh, if you put on, yeah, let's let's work the math. Maybe you put on fifty four hundred dollars worth of tires. You own twenty percent of that. Increases the value by fifty four hundred dollars, and we. Pay you twenty percent of that. Yeah. I'll bet you the dollars to donuts. The appraised value is not going to increase by fifty five. No, no, not, not a chance. Not a chance. Never done. No. So okay. Okay. Next items: AC unit, municipal building. Just got off the phone with Alliance. They're our contracted. Um, they're to our maintenance and repairs. So you all know we have. The units were flooded um, and they had to come and they, they stopped working. They stopped, came out last summer and repaired them. And then we had a fall maintenance and spring maintenance. And then, was it August or September when the AC stopped working? I want to say it was September during the war was built. Yeah. So, and um, they came out with, and they said, these are, it's not working. We, we, were, we gave you a price on a new unit. Um, so I called the office and said, look, I need a price to repair and a price to replace, and I need you to tell me that it's flood related uh, so we can add it to our, our OPP plan. Um, and we um, assuming that it was, but it seems a lot of the timing does seem appropriate, right? Um, and so today they came back and I called today and I told them tonight over the phone with two options, was replacing the unit with the R22, the kind of antiquated refrigerators was fifty thousand, and then going to a heat pump model, um, and that's that's new air and the uh, main keeping the gas heat for that heat pump unit was about fifty thousand, and so I think I think we're going to have to meet again, and I think we're going to probably have to put this out to bid and reach out to a lot of other contractors. So that person needs to go to bid. Yeah, I mean this is yeah that, that number was. Pretty. So, is there any response from the yeah. about it? And that was at like five thirty tonight. You know, oh, right? so yeah, not yet. Believe it or not, <laughs> it's gonna go up. Um, oh, like, like, what is everything going down? Well, they're changing the refrigerant laws again, so four ten A is not gonna be allowed. It'll be U four C or whatever. It's yeah. the propane. State or federal? So, well, let's make it. What is it? So it's your EPA. <laughs> so federal. Yeah, yeah federal do. Should we decide tonight whether or not one entity is going to put out an RFP and solicit bids and then 
health boards couldn't review and select a little well, bit. It's going to fall under any of the FEMA stuff. You guys want to go just keep right on keeping it on. Well, if it's if it will, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, I haven't done anything to settle up on that. But, uh, we should do at some point in time because we would be need at least three bids under FEMA. Yeah. Re take FEMA it no, they're much more lax. We just have to. Well, first we have to determine if it was flood related, and they did it um, assigned under a, that clause in our DI. That process is funny. We have a meeting coming up soon. If I waiting, I, I need a contractor to say why. So, without getting crazy into the nitty gritty, because there's two items here, and they both require RFPs and all sorts of stuff. How do the boards feel about us keeping the AC unit? Obviously, we can't spend twenty five thousand dollars of your money without coming back to you, and you guys do uh, the RFP for the clock tower and everything, and then come back to us. I, I haven't even discussed that with these guys, so they might say, "Shut up, Evan. We don't want to do that." But you know, this all comes back to a previous discussion: the ownership of this building. <laughs> you know, I would have no problem if the village owned the building and the town paid rent. You know, we could budget our monthly rent. The village could own the building. They could take care of the maintenance. They could take care of everything else. You're shaking your head. You don't want the building? No. You don't want But you don't want us to have it either? No. It's a shared building. We've also invested into it. So the biggest problem is that select board comes up with plans to do repairs and then doesn't tell us till after our budget is set and then want to do it that summer. That's why I brought to Evan about the tower that we get on to it and start talking about it so we could budget the money for them. And we budgeted money for this building last year and we've just been waiting for stuff to go wrong. But the point is you couldn't, you would be on a contract or either the town or the village would be on a yearly contract and they couldn't raise it. I mean, until the time, let's say, have it to <laughs> coincide with budget time. So, and then if you had to raise the rent, then we could budget that. You know, so, so what are you suggesting? The village, you give the village a dollar and then you own the building and then we got to pay you a monthly rent? Well, would you do the same with us? No, I would suggest if anything was to happen, it'd have to be half fair market back, right? Because it ain't just, you can't just look at it as we could give a dollar back and forth for this building. Our constituents and their your constituents also pay taxes in two different sections on this building to build this building. I would have no problem doing that. I would have no problem getting a fair market value giving the village half. Yeah, but I don't believe there was any interest in our board to do anything with this, right? We haven't talked about it. Would that, would that be selling yeah. the building? We've talked about it. Yeah, yeah, we just want to sell it. To do I, I'm yeah. speaking for myself. Yeah. I'm just saying. And that's, I'm just... I'm just saying, is there on the conversation? So is there, I don't, fair market I don't know. Oh, true, but I, I don't know if Albert Ward reason? has talked about that concept. Okay, I do believe that, Mike is, this is currently <laughs> representing <laughs> what his thoughts are. Yeah. 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 I can't speak for would the you, board. Would you be willing to have that conversation with your board to see if they would do fair market value? Certainly at the next meeting. Okay. Um, I feel like that's going to bog this meeting down. Right, right, right. I'm just saying. Yeah, if we're, we're not, if, we're, we're not going to come to a discussion about that tonight. I understand that, but at least I know, or the, our board knows that you're be listening. Okay, so that's true. You will listen, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. If, if, you, if that if that offers on the table, well, I will well, listen. I'll, I will listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw in another conversation. When you went to the bathroom, Duncan had offered to do the AC unit. We would do an RFP for the clock tower. RFP for what? Uh, 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 okay. It's All right. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> split the work. Split the workload. So, it's a, so I got I got a, a just something to think about. I haven't even thought it through myself. But another way to do it other than fair market value, which I think would deal with your issue of taxpayer. I don't even want to have this conversation because it wasn't on the agenda for this purpose. But the village is already. I'll listen, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to you, Duncan. No, no well, the, the other the other possibility would be to to establish what each town and village put into it originally for money and inflate that in dollars yeah, interesting but on the surface i'm not interested i would, I would be interested in that but as much as it would be fair market but but interesting concept all right so how's the select board feel about handling the RFPs and everything for the AC unit 
and having the village handle the RFPs for the clock tower. Fine with me. I think it's a good deal for us. All right. So how does <laughs> can you yeah, trust yeah. Uh, yeah, I just did. I think everybody was okay with that. Yeah, we're just putting it out. Right? <laughs> I, I, I feel like we have a path forward. Can I us. can I just ask for a clarification of what we're talking about with the clock tower? Uh, to have somebody look at it and tell us what it needs for repair. But do we do we know specifically what the issues? It's a good point. You've been up in there. Yeah, tell nothing from the inside. It's, it's yeah. fine. It's it's been on the roof. It's it's kind of. You're going to need somebody to come tell you what's wrong with it and give it an estimate for repair. I came and looked at it. Um, yeah, we had to do those emergency repairs at the ceiling. I don't know if you remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, when you do your art, we are going to reach me out to him for the extent of damage. You, you might do that analysis because uh, you did that once. Uh, okay. I don't, I think we're done. Yep. We'll go to your <laughs> that, 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 Hang on, Tom has one more question. What? So much stuff at the clock tower? Yes. Yes. I'll come down and talk to them. Right. I wouldn't characterize it. Can we just like leave that? it? Eric? It's right twice a day. It's a clock. Tom has a question. Your package and I spoke with Eric about this. Um, just while we go film all these properties, it would be really beneficial for the board to come up to an agreement of say thousand charge the municipal building up to ten thousand go forward to discuss the towns and follow the care policy, take care of the problem, take on anything over ten thousand, the full board have to agree on at some time. And then, so say we talk about the lower storage shed, it'd be the same. The village is coming back and slowing down the process. The lower storage shed, we don't have anything in there, do we? Oh, yeah. Lower storage. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the idea of bringing the package. You just think about it. It's going to be a bunch of crap here. It would, it would help Eric and I oh, we go. speed up the process. Oh, we'll Mostly those smaller repairs. That are slightly outside of our procurement policy or within our procurement policy, but they're pretty large, like the, the hot water heater was one, right? Eric don't need to ask us about that. He can take care of that himself. That is, you know, this this is the thing, you know, but this, these things happen. And then there's times when we have to make decisions, but we have to do two boards. Where if there was just a dollar amount that both boards could agree on, and, and if both of the boards agree that one one group just deals with it, and the other board just Eric, trusts it and pays 50%. Now we can just kind of expedite those those smaller maintenance items as they come up. Do you want to put a proposal together? Uh yes, I wrote down a quick one in the packet. Um, it's in the packet, but it's not, it's not on the agenda. Right. right. We're not gonna move. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll take a look at it tonight. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. All right. Select board is adjourned at 803. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.